so um, my name is Dr. Jason Arde and I am a, a senior lecturer in education studies at the University of Roehampton. You're finding that academics are having to do, you know, so much, there's so much more required of them and in some cases that isn't even reflective in the pay or necessarily the length or duration of the contract and increasingly because in terms of trying to navigate or trying to understand some of these changing patterns within academia what you're finding now is that a lot of um, academics are on fixed term contracts so you know some, some of them zero hours but the majority of them fixed term and those fixed term contracts now are between one and two years which obviously doesn't offer any security and it makes it even more difficult and um, creating more feelings of angst and pressure and stress and I think for people you know, you know looking to go into academia who or who currently are in academia one of the more kind of prevalent things is this idea that actually you know whatever I do there's always more there's always something else I have to do because there's this whole idea that you're now accountable to students you're now accountable to senior staff you now have to be publishing you now have to be doing all of these things but there is not actually time to do these things. So the lack of time is what's causing the stress because the work-life balance in itself is not managed properly and I suppose consequently, as a consequence of that, mental health suffers when you don't have that balance. So in terms of kind of some of the personal stories I've been told in terms of the effect that zero hours and fixed term contracts are having on people's kind of personal lives, you know, I've spoken to really close friends who've, you know, are going through relationship breakups in terms of marriages I've had you know I've spoken to friends who've encountered nervous breakdowns and had to take significantly long periods of time out of the sector it's amazing the lack of um, resources that um, staff that institutions have to support staff that may be going through these types of difficulties um, in some cases you know I've had friends speak to me and kind of not highlight that they're dealing with significant personal issues because it's kind of seen as a sign of weakness and it could affect them in terms of promotion. I think that's been probably a bigger case I would argue as well for women. Um, so I've had you know women who specifically may, um, friends of mine who've spoken to me about you know potentially wanting to have a child and that type of thing and feeling that they can't do it because if they do it'll be seen as a sign of weakness and you know the anxiety from work anyway might put undue stress on an unborn child and it's all those kind of different elements that you kind of you think that actually higher education institutions within the UK they do have a duty of care to their staff. Well I think the strikes effectively happening because of pension cuts so it's happening because you know um, we have a government that historically um, hasn't always appreciated what people have done in the private sector sorry the public sector so if we're being specific you know, if we even take an industry or a profession like nursing for example you know there's education we're talking about policing we're talking about um, the fire service we've what we've seen over the last 10 years is you know significant cuts to all those professions um, and in in making those significant cuts what we've seen is you know deficits in p pension benefits for those individuals who really um, have to work very hard in their jobs anyway in those noble uh, public service jobs that facilitate and serve our communities it's a stressful job it's it's a job that you know in many ways can rob you of your mental faculties so one of the things that um, is supposed to relieve that or a benefit of you know being in in that line of work is that actually you're entitled to a good state pension um, and a good professional pension and what we have are infringes on those pensions and invariably those are going to cause anxieties, angst, anger and people are going to, are going to protest because they're not going to want those, those things infringed upon. I think one of the things that universities need to do to better look after lecturers, I think um, there's a culture in universities to just get on with it um, and I think universities really need to um, have better mechanisms of support um, and they also need to fundamentally remember that they have a duty of care to their employees and somewhere in this kind of capitalist swell where you know the fixation has become, has become on gaining as many, many students through the doors and taking their money um, and I don't think that's a disrespectful comment I think that's, the, that's you know universities need that to survive and that's where we're currently at you know they want you, students to come through the doors because it's a, worth a lot of money to universities but in doing that I do think they need to think about some of the pressures they're putting on academic staff. So um, my name is Dr.